message. All right. Well, welcome. I'm so glad to see some uh, people join us. I know how busy you all are um, between work and grad school and families. And then we're all trying to do this during a pandemic. So I will try to be brief and give you the information you need quickly. Um, first of all, is everyone seeing my screen in the PowerPoint slide? Okay, thank you. I, I started teaching a class the other day and, and people weren't seeing it and no one wanted to interrupt me to say anything. So I just wanted to double check. Uh, first of all, I wanna introduce myself. My name is Dr. Catherine Wright. I am the graduate programs coordinator for the Department of Literacy, Language and Culture. Um, I work with Dr. Booth and Dr. Peralta. They do this wonderful job running the review program. And then my job is to try to help get you folks from, all right, you're completing the review program. You're so close to having your master's degree done. Let me see what I can do to help you get there. Um, and I, my favorite part of my job is actually chatting with grad students, figuring out, well, how can we make this program serve you, serve what you want to do, um, and really help out your students? Because that's at the end of the day who we're really all here for. Um, so at the end, I will give you all my contact information, including a way to make appointments with me. You are welcome to make appointments via phone or Zoom. Um, for a quick question, or if you just want to chat, um, it truly is my favorite part of my job. So, um, you know, if you make an appointment with me, that means one less meeting I have to go to, and I'll really, uh, you know, appreciate you. So, first of all, um, if you have completed or are about to complete redo, you have already completed half of the over half of the master's degree. Uh, one thing I want to point out is that the redo program was designed to help you get either your ESL or bilingual endorsement. So there are some requirements in there, like the language classes, that are not part of the master's degree. But everything you see on the slide here are the courses that um, you have completed that can be applied to your master's degree. So most of them. Um, sometimes people will ask or they'll be worried because you know they took Spanish 15 years ago and, and it was at the undergrad level. So does that count towards the master's degree? Well, no, it doesn't count towards the master's degree, but you don't need it for the master's degree. So you're, you're all set. Um, all of these courses automatically transfer over. All right. So there's only 14 credits remaining uh, and it can be done pretty easily within one year. Uh, if you, what I recommend to people is that they take the semester after they finish redo. I realize redo is intense. You've done a lot in one year, but you're already on a roll. So if you can take six credits, that's next summer. Um, then it, it's kind of like a downhill slide from there. So over the summer, there's two courses being offered. They're both offered online in June, um, ED LLC 500 and then Ed SIFS 506. Um, all the LLC courses are always offered online. So that fits with your program. The SIFS course, the one, this is the only course that's from outside of our department. So we don't have as much control over it. So it's offered more often. It's offered almost every semester, but it's not always offered online. I say this very specifically because it is being offered online this summer. And as of yesterday, it was full. So I emailed the department chair and begged her to open up another section specifically saying that we have all these redo students, they need to take it, they've got to take it online, please can we open another section? And they did. Um, so there is now a second section of EdSys 506 open. Um, if you only want to take one course, I'd, you know, I'd actually suggest you take the SIFS course because it's being offered online right now. Um, and I would just ask as a favor to me that when you sign up, that you choose the one with the lower enrollment so that, because I, I, I said, of, of course, we're gonna have all of these students. So if you can just help me look like I, I didn't make that up, I'd really appreciate it. So, um, but there are two sections of it open. They're offered same professor, same time, um, but just made it open so that we would have more space for you folks. Then in the fall, you take um, LC 504, Literacies for Bilingual and English Language Learners. And you also take a pass fail course, a one credit capstone proposal. So it's only one credit, so it's four credits total, uh, which is a bit more manageable for the school year. As you all know, taking a full, full load while you're also teaching full time is doable, but challenging. So not everyone wants to jump into a whole nother year of that. Well, the nice thing is that the way we've structured this, you only have four credits in the fall and four credits in the spring. So it's a little bit less intense. Um, in the capstone proposal course, we, what we do is we come up with your idea and your plan for your capstone project. 
So it's a one credit course because you're kind of thinking about what things did you learn in your program? What are you really excited about? What do you want to apply and do something with? And you come up with a plan. And then in the spring semester, there's a two credit parental involvement course, that's 507. And then you do your two credit capstone course. If you've done a good job with your proposal, what's nice is that you, you already know what you're gonna do for your capstone. You've laid out the plan, now you just have to execute it. All right, so those two courses lead to really nicely into one another. And students really have a great opportunity to apply all that they've learned, make a difference in their, um, in their schools, in their communities, or, or really dive into a topic that you're interested in learning more about. There's a lot of formats the capstone can um, take and a lot of students have questions about that. So I'm happy to dive into that more if you, have, if you want to um, when we're done. These classes can all be taken in just about any order. The only exception is that you have to do 672, the proposal before you do the capstone, which kind of makes sense, right? You need to plan before you go into the project. Um, but other than that, I do recommend that you do this all in one year, but if you wanted to do it a little bit more slowly, um, you could. So a couple of really important notes, all of the LLC courses are offered once per year. So if you, you're going to have to take some classes during the summer, it's not that you can just avoid ever taking summer classes again, um, but they are all online. Um, as I said, 506 is offered most semesters. And if you wanted to take a face-to-face -face course, some students are really excited about that opportunity because everything's been online. Um, usually in the fall and spring, it's, there is a face-to-face -face option available. This fall, things are still a little bit up in the air, what we're all gonna be doing, but you know, that option does um, exist. I, as I said, you need to do 672 before you do 692. Your coursework remains valid for 10 years. So what that means is you, you need to think back to when did you start the review program? That was your first semester. So let's say you started it in the fall of 2020. In the fall of 2030, the courses you took in the fall of 2020 will no longer be applicable to a degree plan. All right, so you'd have to retake those ones. And then the following semester, there'd be another semester with the courses that are too old. All right, I know most people that's not an issue at this point, but I do wanna make sure everyone knows because what I would hate is for someone to come back to me in 10 years and say, hey, I thought I could do this and, and not know. The cost is about $400 a credit. Um, I was, I am always nervous about giving exact numbers for financial aid because there's a lot of fees and things that are put in there and it's constantly changing. So I do have the link to um, student financial services there as well. But if you want a round figure, about $400 per credit. So the whole, um, together, if you're looking at, you're looking at spending a little bit over $5,000 for all, all of the courses together. Um, another important point, our department is in the process of updating our MA degree programs, um, and we're doing some really exciting things. I say this only because you folks are currently enrolled in the existing MED programs. Uh, now, you will still be able to complete your degree within the 10-year window, and we will be offering these courses at least for another year or two. However, I you know, three, four years out, we might offer courses less often, or we might have to substitute courses in. You will still be able to complete your degree, I promise, within that 10-year window. We will find a way to do it. It just might get a little bit more complicated. Um, all that to say, if you're interested, I highly recommend you go ahead and just kind of do it while you've got this momentum, while the courses are being offered and you don't have to worry about anything else, okay? So the other question people keep asking is, well, what is the next steps? How do I do this? Well, most of the review students are already enrolled in one of the, excuse me, that's an error there. It's an MED program. You're already in the master's program. So all you need to do is register for classes, just like you've registered every other semester. So if you're interested in continuing, um, all you need to do is go on and sign up for summer classes. Um, you know, we've got those two options and either or both. Um, they are going to both be offered in June this year. So that would make for a somewhat busy June, uh, but then you'd have the rest of the summer off. So there's, you know, kind of a push pull, right? Like a, a good and bad thing there. Um, but then you take, you do your six credits, you do your four in the fall, four in the spring, graduate next May with your master's degree. So I want to just 
um, this is my contact information. You've got my email, my office phone number. If you leave a voicemail at that number, uh, it will email it to me. So please feel free to leave a voicemail. Um, I also use You Can Book Me. So that's the link there. If you want to make an, like I said, make an appointment for really just about any reason, I would love to sit and chat with you, talk about your program, talk about your options. Um, sometimes people want to try to do more things, want to take some extra electives, you are welcome to. We can talk about what would be good options for you that would serve your career goals. Um, really, we're here to support you. The nice thing is um, Dr. Booth and Dr. Peralta are still your advisors, so you still can rely on them for help and support, and then you just get me as an extra person. Um, so moving forward, you just get more, not less. All right, I'm going to stop recording.